During the telethon, a representative of the main intelligence directorate of Ukraine, Andriy Yusov noted that today a naval drone in the hands of reconnaissance operators is a formidable weapon, and probably the most effective fighter of the aggressor fleet during the period of a full-scale invasion. As of today, the aggressor's Black Sea Fleet has already suffered more than $500 million in losses as a result of the actions of the Special Units of Defense Intelligence of Ukraine that use Magura's V-5 drone, Yusov said. He added that the process of improving Magura is ongoing and after each successful operation the actions of both intelligence officers and the enemy are analyzed. The secret of Magura V-5 Ukrainian maritime drone is in the skill of Ukrainian manufacturers. They were able to create a unique means of destroying the enemy fleet and not only the fleet, but also the weapons and personnel on board at the time of destruction, combined with the skill of the operators and specialists of the Defense Intelligence of Ukraine, in particular the Group 13 Special Unit of the Defense Intelligence of Ukraine, Yusov said. According to the press representative, the Magura V-5 is a formidable weapon, and probably the most effective weapon against the Black Sea Fleet during the full-scale invasion. U.S. General calls on the U.S. authorities to take risks for the sake of Ukraine. In the United States, some people believe that the country is not providing enough assistance to Ukraine in the fight against Russia and are calling for increased support for Kyiv. According to retired American Brigadier General Mark Kimmett, who once worked as Assistant Secretary of State of the United States, the country's authorities need to risk their military reserves without fear and send them to Ukraine. The general's words are quoted by the American publication Politico. Kimmett notes that the Pentagon generally considers support for Ukraine at the current level acceptable given the risks of reducing its strategic reserves. However, the time has come to take greater risks to prevent a potential defeat for Ukraine, the former advisor to the U.S. Secretary of State is sure. The general added that a fairly large number of weapons which are stockpiled around the world in case of any emergencies or exercises could be sent to Ukraine. According to Kimmett, Kiev does not receive enough military assistance and it needs to be increased, which requires large financial costs. Winning wars is expensive, but not as expensive as losing them, said the former Brigadier General. According to him, failure in Ukraine could encourage the very war US soldiers in places like Korea stand ready to fight. Adversaries such as North Korean leader Kim Jong-un takes note of US hesitancy to back friends and allies, so does China as it peers across the Taiwan Strait. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky needs more ammunition and commanders like La Camara should see the consequences to their own missions should Ukraine fall to Russia, even if the cost comes out of their inventories. Overall, U.S. Army officials note that the current risk in supporting Ukraine is manageable, but it's time to take a bit more risk and dip further into those stockpiles to stave off potential defeat. Winning wars is expensive, but not nearly as expensive as losing them. U.S. suspends bomb supplies to Israel over fears of Rafah attack. The Biden administration halted bomb shipments to Israel last week over concerns that the country may launch a wide-scale military assault on the city of Rafah in southern Gaza, citing Sky News. According to a senior administration official, the shipment was supposed to consist of 1,800 bombs weighing 900 kilograms each and 1,700 bombs weighing 225 kilograms each. He added that the U.S. is concerned about how large bombs could be used in densely populated urban areas and has not yet made a final decision on how to proceed with the deliveries. There is also growing concern within the White House about the situation in Rafa, but publicly administration officials emphasize that they do not believe that the recent operations contradict Biden's warnings against a wide-scale operation in the city. Israeli forces called on residents of Rafah to evacuate during the night of May the 6th before targeting Hamas targets in the city. Biden's administration in April began reviewing future transfers of military assistance to Netanyahu's government as Netanyahu's government appeared to move closer toward an invasion of Rafah despite months of opposition from the White House. The official said the decision to pause the shipment was made last week and no final decision has been made yet on whether to proceed with the shipment at a later date. U.S. officials had declined for days to comment on the halted transfer, word of which came as Biden described U.S. support for Israel as ironclad, 
even when we disagree. Israeli troops recently seized control of Gaza's vital Rafa border crossing in what the White House described as a limited operation that stopped short of the full-on Israeli invasion of the city that Biden has repeatedly warned against on humanitarian grounds, most recently in a call with Netanyahu. Israel has ordered the evacuation of 100,000 Palestinians from the city. Israeli forces have also carried out what it described as targeted strikes on the eastern part of Rafah and captured the Rafah crossing, a critical conduit for the flow of humanitarian aid along the Gaza-Egypt border.